DevOps is a set of practices that aims to shorten the system development life cycle and provide continuous delivery with high software quality. So what exactly is DevOps and why has it gained so much traction in the IT industry? How does DevOps combine software development and IT operations? What are the principles of DevOps that lie in the three ways? In this video, we are going to cover it all. Welcome to DevOps video series from K21 Academy, where we help you in your journey to cloud from a complete beginner. Our multi-level training structure will help you learn and move ahead in your career. DevOps beginner, that's stage one. Stage two will be attaining DevOps foundation level knowledge and next step would be to get certified. Then stage three is expert level DevOps engineer. So in this video, our DevOps Institute Certified Trainer will talk about what is DevOps and why there is so much buzz around it. He also covers the principles of DevOps in this lesson. So let's hear what our trainer has to say. So what do you mean by DevOps? So you would have heard about this term DevOps uh, quite a lot in the industry around for the last three, four years. And you would be getting confused with a lot of people telling about different definitions of DevOps. But there is no hard and fast rule of DevOps definitions. Like in each and every website, they will be giving a different definitions of DevOps. But in this end, we will actually see what is DevOps so that once after you complete this certification, if someone is asking you what is DevOps, you would be able to explain them in a simpler terms. Okay. So what do you mean by DevOps? DevOps is nothing but it's a union of people plus process plus products products or otherwise called as tools to enable the continuous delivery of a value to our end users. So what does that mean? Which means we actually need three components for enabling DevOps, which is people, obviously, because you should change their mindset of working from their old traditional way to the new modern automation world. So once after you change the mindset of the people, then you have to bring in a new process. So what are all the different processes available? So you have an ITIL process, you have an agile process, you have a scrum process, you have a lean process, and there are multiple other process which forms together as a DevOps. And then once after you change the mindset of the people and you have chosen your own process, then comes the products, which is tools. So you have to choose your right tools depending upon your projects, depending upon your company and your client. And bringing in all these three components together, it will enable you to give a continuous delivery of a value to the end users. Which means, for example, if you are creating a software called as Excel 2020 and you are able to deliver that software to the client before the delivery date, the client is very happy because you have given it before the delivery date. So when the client is about to test that software and if they are trying to copy and paste some items, if the copy and paste is not working on that particular software, then it is not going to give a value to the client because you have delivered the software very fast. You have delivered the software before the delivery date. But at the end, the value of that particular software is not met because it is not able to do your features. So that is not DevOps, which means if your value reaches only to your particular development environment and if your value reaches only during your testing, but when the real users are actually testing it on a production, if it is not working, then it is not actually going to serve you the purpose. So that is why you should always make sure DevOps is not just automating a pipeline. It is not just automating any software. It should automate a software. At the same time, it should deliver a value to the customer. So this is called as DevOps. I hope in this session you would actually understand the basic of what is DevOps and what is the value that you need to give it to the DevOps. So the major principles of DevOps actually lies in three ways, which is the flow, which is like the first way is understanding the flow or you can obviously call it as systems thinking. So you have to think on how your system is going to perform based on your code and then only you have to write your code. The next way is like amplifying feedback loops. So you have to create a lot of feedback rules within your team internally to understand where it went wrong and how to improvise your process. 
and the last way is continuous experimenting and learning so you should not actually think about failures you should be doing a lot of experimentations and you should learn day by day so that you can improvise your devops flow so let us see that three ways in a pictorial representation so what do you mean by a systems thinking uh, systems thinking is nothing but consider for example if you have a production system which is actually running on java 8 okay and uh, your development team has got a new requirement like you should use java 12 for your new feature so while designing a code or while developing a code the developers has to think the system first they should obviously think like okay my current java version is 8 on the production if i'm actually using java 12 now will it be compatible for the production will there be any problem so before writing the code you should always think system in your mind and then you have to write it accordingly obviously the operation should also think like okay there is a new requirement from the client to use java 12 whereas the current production system is actually running on java 8 then what should they do whether it is okay to upgrade or if they are going to upgrade if there is going to be any uh, issues that will be arising so both the operations and the dev has to think towards the system perspective that is the first way the next way is nothing but amplifying the feedback loops so what do you mean by amplifying feedback loops you should obviously get a lot of feedbacks from the developer and the operations team each other so that they can improvise their process so there are multiple ways to actually give a feedback we will be seeing it on our next slide the third way is nothing but continuous learning and experimentation you should obviously do a lot of experimentation that is where your innovation and creativity comes into the picture not always the first attempt itself you will get it successful you will be able to run multiple attempts and there will be multiple failures but still you should not be worrying about like why is my code getting failed why am i getting so much of failures no because failure is a stepping stone of success so also you should be able to learn a lot of things on daily basis so let us learn the first way in a detailed one so the first way i told you is a systems thinking or you call it as a flow so you should obviously understand like the flow of work and you should be able to remove the constraints as i was telling about you should be able to think on systems perspective and remove the unwanted constraints or unwanted dependencies from the system and you should not pass any of your defects downstream what do you mean by downstream for example if you are actually running it from the production you should not pass that defects to the qa and to the development team the always the stream has to go upstream it should not always go downstream towards and you should not always allow the local optimization to go cause the global degradation what does that mean your local system configuration should not affect your global system configuration you should always think on the systems perspective and you should be able to understand the entire system before designing or before coding anything the second way as i was talking about it's a feedback loop you should be able to understand and respond to the customers both the internal customer as well as the external customers for that what should be able to do you should create a lot of feedback loops and you should always have a embedded knowledge of where it is required what it is required and these are all the different examples of feedback loops you can create an automated testing and get the testing results you can have a peer-to-peer -peer review for the production changes you could use a lot of monitoring tools to understand where is a gap you can use a lot of dashboards you can use logs you can improvise your process with the help of your measurements you can use a postmortem analysis postmortem analysis is nothing but your rca which is root cause analysis if something goes wrong from the root cause analysis you can understand where exactly the problem came in how to resolve those problems and everything and you should always do an on-call rotation because if one person is always supporting then that becomes a dependency whereas you should rotate your on-call person so that all the members on the team can understand what is a feedback happening and you should have your change management incident management and problem management data so these are all the different examples of how to use a feedback loops the third way is like continual experimental and learning you should always allocate time for your daily improvement and you should always create rituals to reward the team for taking risks see always 
the uh, appreciation is a main scope to increase your customer satisfaction whether your customer or whether your team is actually doing something new please do not scold them just encourage them and tell them like it is obviously it will take a lot of time for them also to achieve on a very first attempt but try to encourage them try to motivate them which will help them to do much better scope and always introduce flaws faults on the system so that you would know how your system is behaving and what are the improvements that you need to do on your system and always do a safe experimentation and innovations like bringing in a lot of hackathons bringing in a lot of competitions within the team and other things which helps people also to innovate and to find out the ways to improvise your system so uh, you would have heard about netflix okay so they have this every year regular program called as chaos monkey uh, which has been done by the simian army so what do you mean by chaos monkey chaos monkey on a nutshell is nothing but they have a five to six group of members who would be going into a data center and they would be obviously destroying the entire code and the entire systems and still they will be finding out like whether they are providing a downtime or not so you would also be thinking on such aspects like you have to bring in a fault into your system and you have to bring in a lot of problems into your system and you have to find out how to resolve that how is your system corresponding to that particular fault or a problem how it is responding to that how can i overcome that so that is how you are getting stronger based on your failures okay and obviously how to encourage a learning culture you have to encourage a learning culture by bringing in lot of portals you have to uh, learn from lot of udemy's linux academies and every other sites which is providing your lot of learning uh, programs from youtube you have to create a training skills you have to do a cross training between your teams you have to incorporate the lot of learnings and uh, you have to use a technology to accelerate it and you have to allow mistakes from the learning and making uh, results from the lessable learning and by doing all these things people will also learn a lot and people will be able to learn from their mistakes and people will be able to share their knowledge so i hope this will give you an understanding of what is the basic principle of devops what are three ways of how to achieve devops and what is a phoenix project Well that was our expert trainer talking about DevOps and covering the three ways. DevOps and its principles are part of the DevOps Foundation course in our training program where all these topics are covered in detail. If you're not yet DevOps certified and would like to see what to expect in the exam and how to prepare for the exam, I would like to invite you for a free 90 minute session with DevOps Institute as well as Microsoft certified DevOps expert trainer We will talk about DevOps Foundation course and topics you must understand. Additionally, we will show live demo and share uses of different DevOps tools. We will also talk about exam basics. So you can register for free by going on to this URL: k2academy.com/devops02. Remember, we always get excellent feedback on our DevOps sessions. In the upcoming video in this series we will look at agile methodology and devops relationship with it so i will see you next week please click on the subscribe button if you haven't done that already and press on the bell icon so you don't miss out on our next video